As they revive a classic board and video game series, Battletech is gradually becoming one of my most anticipated games of next year, as it was recently postponed to early 2018. You might be familiar with the likes of Mech Assault and Mech Warrior, but Battletech actually takes things back to the turn-based strategy of the board games, wrapping it up in much more modern clothing and with the dynamism that a video game can offer. At Gamescom last week, there was an opportunity to see the latest developments in the game beyond what was shown so far in the initial backer beta and the recent update that added head-to-head -head multiplayer to this. It shows a continued refinement of the core gameplay that I first saw at PDXCon back in May, with tiny little tweaks like the stability meter now being broken down into five blocks as opposed to being a solid bar that fills up, and this more clearly defines when your robot is about to take a tumble. Most noticeable for this demo was the new planetary setting, taking on the dusty reddish-brown hues of a Martian-styled planet. So instead of being able to hide away in a tree line as in some other biomes, you have the swirling dust clouds that act as cover to improve your evasiveness. However, I would like to see these be more dynamic and shift around the map. The centerpiece in this occasion was a small and desolate cluster of buildings, both providing cover and also opportunities for attack, as well as the amusing sight of these huge hulking robots just stomping over the tops of buildings. The turn-based combat is as intriguingly tactical as I found it to be before, with mechs coming in various sizes and so being able to take their turns during different phases of the overarching turn. A lighter mech can react quicker, move further, and take its turn in an earlier phase, but you can also hold it back for later phases if you wish, and think that this would give you a tactical advantage. Holding them until the final phase, for example, can actually let you effectively have two moves and actions back to back, if they then get to go first in the next turn, making them perfect for hit and run attacks. If multiple mechs can move in the same phase, of course, then you and your opponent take turns picking from the selection that is available. In this demo, we were being shown a new light mech equipped with an array of flamethrowers. Considering that mechs can overheat from too much use and then end up shutting down to cool off, making them vulnerable to target of opportunity attacks, this makes flamethrowers particularly useful for ganging up on a particular enemy and forcing the issue. I absolutely loved one animation in which my little flamethrower guy ran up to an enemy performed a melee attack that destabilized the opposing mech and then decided to wash it in searing heat from his flamethrowers as it fell to the ground. The only problem that I encountered is that this mech has got very, very limited ammo, which came to bite me later on in the fight. There's also some new moves in your arsenal. Death from above is just about as bombastic an attack as they come, seeing the hulking robots leap into the sky on rocket boosters and then come crashing down to the ground next to an enemy to deal damage at point-blank range. It is immensely satisfying, but it does come at a cost as it destabilizes your mech and also damages the internal structure of its legs in the process. So yes, bombastic and very satisfying, but also one to reserve for the dramatic finishes if you value actually winning the fight. You'll likely have to take that into account as you're fighting during the overarching single player campaign, where you will then need to repair and replace mechs that have been damaged or destroyed. It could be much better to play it safe than to be reckless and rush in like a fool, otherwise when it comes to taking on the next contract for your mercenary outfit, you might be hampered by the lingering damage and be fighting with your backs to the wall. While I was definitely being more reckless than cautious in this instance, I still feel like I had the upper hand in this fight. What was actually happening was much more even between myself and the AI though, especially as my luck started to run out and a couple of my plays didn't come off later in the demo. Sadly, we'll never know if I was destined to have a rousing victory or suffer a defeat as I simply ran out of time in the allotted window at Gamescom. Even so, it's clear to me that Battletech is coming along nicely. The core hasn't changed too much since PDXCon a few months ago, but there's been this refinement to the user interface and some of the gameplay ideas since then. Certainly, it's also great to get a sneak peek at a new planet, new weapons, and ridiculous over-the-top attacks like Death From Above. Thanks as ever for checking out our video, we've got plenty more to come from Gamescom, but Paradox Interactive fans should check out our preview of the upcoming city builder Surviving Mars. We will leave you with more footage from this build of Battletech, but as always, please do like, subscribe and share, and hopefully we will see you again soon. Target. Goodbye!
for orders. Got it. Got a sensor trace. Got it. Got an enemy flanking to the side. Armor breach. Internal. I'm gonna need a medic. Standing by. A copy. Locking in all. Thank you. 